Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on fluid dynamics part 2, the Coanda effect. The Coanda effect refers to the tendency of a stream of fluid flowing in proximity to a convex surface to follow the line of the surface rather than its original course. A moving column of fluid entrains molecules lying close to the curved surface and this creates a relatively low pressure contact point. The pressure further away from the curved surface is relatively higher, thus the column of fluid is pushed towards the curved surface rather than continue in its straight course. Practical Applications In the chamber of an IV fluid giving set, the flow of fluid jumps and sticks to the wall of the chamber due to the Coanda effect. This causes difficulty in assessing the rate of infusion of the IV drip as the number of drops per minute cannot be ascertained as the fluid is not dripping in the center of the chamber. The chamber of the IV fluid giving set may be tilted to the opposite side to try to dislodge and center the fluid stream in the chamber. Fluid preferentially flows down one limb of a Y junction rather than be equally distributed. For example, IYQ Dyset described an intubated patient with Coanda effect as an explanation for unequal ventilation of the lungs. In that patient, inspection showed initial right chest expansion followed later by left chest expansion after endotracheal intubation and confirmation of correct tracheal tube position and ventilation. Asynchrony of breath sounds was also present on auscultation of the lungs. The asynchrony persisted despite adjusting and testing the depth of insertion of the tracheal tube. Preoperative chest X-ray showed tracheal deviation with an abrupt rightwards angulation of the trachea 20 degrees from the vertical at the T2 level. This was slightly caused by unfolding of the aortic arch. The tracheal tube may have been eccentrically located in the tracheal lumen lying close to the right tracheal wall. Based on the Coanda effect, the jet of gas from the end of the tracheal tube adheres to the right tracheal wall, following its contours to reach the right main bronchus. To rectify the issue, the ETT cuff was deflated and the endotracheal tube rotated 90 degrees to the left while maintaining the same tube depth. After this adjustment, both lungs became synchronously and equally ventilated. The 90 degree rotation was chosen because if rotation did not correct the eccentricity of the endotracheal tube position, rotation would at least move the flow along the anterior wall of the trachea to divide into both lungs at the carina. Other examples of fluid preferentially flowing down one limb of a Y junction includes unequal blood flow at a bifurcation of a blood vessel due to an ateroma, an unequal filling of a pair of alveoli due to mucus plugs in the airway. The severity of cardiac valve regurgitation may be underestimated by sole reliance on visual estimation of jet area estimation by 2D and 3D echocardiography due to an eccentric jet with Coanda effect. Regurgitant valvular jets may be either central or eccentric. Eccentric regurgitant jets directed towards the walls of the receiving chamber appear smaller than a central jet of the same regurgitant volume due to the Coanda effect. Other parameters that are less susceptible to the influence of the Coanda effect for grading of the severity of valve regurgitation should be used to improve accuracy, such as the use of vena contracta and volumetric measurements of quantification. Breathing systems. The Coanda effect can be used to explain the manner in which gases move within breathing systems the Coanda effect makes the gas flow cling to a particular limb of the circuit during inspiration or expiration, such as during spontaneous respiration using a T-piece or during controlled ventilation using a Mapleson D circuit. Kindly refer to the video discussing breathing systems for further details. Control circuits of mechanical ventilators. The control circuit is the system that governs or controls the ventilator drive mechanism or output control valve. It is responsible for the characteristic output waveforms. Examples include open loop control circuits, closed loop control circuits, mechanical, pneumatic, fluidics, and electronic control circuits. Fluidic control circuits. Fluidics refers to the application of gas flow 
and pressure to control the direction of gas flow and to perform logic functions. The logic functions of fluidics have their origins in digital electronics. Fluidic elements, like digital electronic gates, control their outputs according to the inputs received. A fluidic ventilator can be designed to function in a similar way to other ventilators that are electronically controlled by combining fluidic elements in specific ways. Fluidic elements operate using the Coanda effect. If a jet of gas exits at high velocity adjacent to a wall, the gas flow will attach to the adjacent wall. Separation bubble is an area of reduced pressure. The separation bubble attaches the fluid flow to the adjacent surface. Flow splitter is located beside adjacent walls. It is used in fluidic elements to control the direction of flow and perform logic functions. The Penlon Nofuel 200 ventilator is an example of a ventilator that uses fluidic control circuits. In this ventilator, a valve is used to move gas flow from one limb of a circuit to another. The Kwanda effect makes the gas flow cling to a particular output limb during inspiration or expiration. These are my references. Thank you.